back uh, for episode three. Really enjoyed the first two. What are your thoughts about that so far? Well, I mean, it was pretty good. I like, um, I guess, just just speaking about my life and stuff. Not too much, but speaking about it. Okay. Let me run. Well, um, so there are multiple topics that uh, that I want to touch on, uh, especially your early life and how that that came about. Yeah. Uh, so what what was your life like? You were were you born? Uh, what were your parents like? What are your parents like? That that type of thing, because you, you implied that you had a really rough start. Yeah, I mean, I was born in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and well, my childhood it was it was it was normal. We I just I want to say I didn't get as much as the other guy, you know. And being that I was so ambitious and I've always wanted what the other guy had, type you know. It just led me into the wrong paths, leading me to the wrong people, being around wrong friends and stuff. But yeah, as far as my parents, my parents are they're they're good people, you know. But they just like me, they made the wrong choices in life too, and it led it to like me having to live with my father and my sisters having to live with my mother and stuff. So we didn't actually, I didn't actually grow up with both my parents in the same household. But it didn't. It didn't. I wouldn't say it did kind of affect my life as a whole, you know, just not having both parents. I did have like a mom and a dad figure inside my house, but it's not really the same. Well, you mentioned me earlier that you had a, your, your first gun at the age of 12. Yeah. <laughs> so, how'd that come about? No, I mean, I don't want to get into too much detail about it, but I did. Yeah. It's not really, it's not really an environment I was in. It wasn't really hard to get anything like that, you know? Like I said, it was just getting involved with the wrong people at the wrong time. It just. Why did you feel that you needed a gun at the age of 12? Well, at that age, it, for me, it was like more, it's kind of empowering, I guess. Yeah. Kind of empowering. And then there were other reasons why, too, you know, but that was really the most, the biggest one. No, I, you say, you, you know, and actually, no, I don't know any reason why a 12 year old should have a gun or want one. So maybe you can help me with that. No, it's just, it's just something that I say. It's just like a, just part of my slang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So there's people that you should not have been around. What, what are they like and how they drag you down the wrong path? I mean, those kind of people were like, they were below me as far as like financially and the household they lived in. So me just hanging around those people just because I could kind of maybe uh, relate a little bit to their situation, but not completely. And they were just involved in the wrong stuff. And they were older than me. Those Everybody that I hanged around when I was younger, they were older than me. So they kind of had like more access to more stuff and they had more experience in life and whatever. So more experience. How did that lead you to a, a life of crime? I mean, I don't understand that. It's just, it just starts off slowly, you know, it just like you do little stuff and then you want to do more and then you start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you start getting older and wanted to do like hanging around people that are getting more money and doing bigger stuff. You know, it's just, it's just like, it just leads there. It just leads there. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I totally agree that you, if you want to, uh, be the best. You need to hang around people that are the best. If yeah. you, um, uh, if you want to go, if you're going after the money uh, aspect of it, you want to hang around people who who have made money, and so yeah. from them you can learn how to make money. Um, but you, have, it sounds like the people that were making money were making money illegally. Through, through what i mean what how did that happen i mean it's it's like it just really the people that i was hanging around was more like they were just doing grunt stuff i don't i don't know how to explain it it's just like the bottom of the stuff you're stuff at the bottom in any if you're in whatever you're gonna start you're never gonna start at the top and work down you're gonna start at the bottom and work up so what what would a grunt assignment be what was um, it'll be something like, I guess, armed robbery or something like that. That's the low level. That's low level yeah. entry. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 
I guess on robbery, you know what I'm saying, selling drugs, stuff like that. I made the assumption about the drug selling drugs, <clears throat> whereas maybe you're uh, the street street guy and you get from another guy and the suppliers keep getting bigger as you go up scale. Yeah. So then you did you sell stuff on the streets? You you or do you just go straight to armed robbery and end up in in jail? It wasn't it wasn't I wasn't too deep into that type of stuff. I wasn't too deep into that, but I was around a lot of people that were doing it. So of course I was like I was kind of doing it, but not doing it as much as they were doing it, you know. It wasn't like I wasn't as bad into the like drug dealing or selling drugs and stuff like that. Okay. So then but so you did more than one armed robbery before you were caught? I mean it was I mean, no, I've never, I've never really done anything like that before. That was really the first time I've ever done something like that. Wow. Yeah. Again, I know you don't want to talk about that specific incident or the yeah variety of reasons, so we're not, we're gonna hop right over that. Yeah. So then, after that happened, you went to, uh, you went through the, the the process, whatever that process, the juries and all yeah. that up in in jail what was your first day like when they closed the door and that clang and then the key lit what 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 was that like i mean it's not really something you don't really process it at first you just sit there and just like well i'm in a situation you don't really actually come to terms with you just being in there and actually facing time until they give you like paperwork they give you the paperwork with your charges and all that stuff, and you're like, damn, yeah, I'm locked up now. You know, but it was it was hard at first. But it's more of like if you don't think about it, then you won't really stress about it. That's the kind of mindset that we had on this side. So you didn't dwell on it because dwelling on it's not gonna get you anywhere. Yeah, it's like it's like when you when you're in jail, prison, you don't want to hear too much about what's going on in the world with your family and stuff. Even though you want to know what's going on and they're good, you don't want to hear too much because then you start dwelling on things. You start thinking about what what could happen, what this, what's going on right now at this moment that I can't see, you know. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of tough moments in there. Uh, yeah. Holidays probably aren't a good time. <laughs> I mean, they're just they're just another day for us. Holidays. So you get in there and you uh, you're you're forced to work. And you yep. get very little pay. We talked about that last time, $7.50 a week. And then there's a, a guy that will clean your your cell or <laughs> your clothes yep. or whatever. What other options are there for, for money making? Now, I know there somebody's going to smuggle drugs in. You, yeah. I, I don't know anything about it. But how does the drugs come in through the, the, the guards or how does, how does that happen? I mean, it's more like, it's like, um, how do I want to say this? The same way people are getting drugs in the world is the same way people are getting drugs on the inside. It's the same, same thing. They're getting it from the people that are trying to stop the drugs from getting it. You know what I mean? Not really. No. It's more like, I guess, I guess you could say sometimes they do have guards that do stuff like that. Right. That bring so that's mostly, yeah, that's sometimes they do stuff like that or sometimes they'll find their own way. They'll find people to throw stuff over the fence and stuff like that, you know? Okay. Yeah. So on a, a certain day, a certain time, something comes flying over the, over the top and <laughs> yeah. And you claim it. Or I, I've even yeah. read there were drone, drone shipments. Where they would drop it I've never the... seen that. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> what? I've never seen that like that. I ain't gonna lie. Right. That, that's it. Uh... So then somebody gets that in there and then they, the, what is the most popular drug then? Is it some what really the most popular drug? It's like, um, I don't really know now because they go, they a lot of people change, you know, and it really depends on where you're at, you know, because you get it, depend, it really depends on race, it depends on where you're at, it depends on it, depends on a lot of things, but most of the time you're going to see is meth, you're going to see meth a lot. <laughs> wow, big drug in prison. And then you said there was a racial difference. So yeah. who likes it's, what? It's more like, I guess, depending on 
I guess depending on who you are too. But Mo, when you look on the inside, you actually because on the inside it's it, it's it's a lot of racism on the inside. It's way more racism on the inside than it is out here. It's whites and then blacks, and you have Hispanics. You know that's how it is on the inside. That's how they stick together. So when you see it, you see more white people using meth. You see black people on the inside. They're smoking weed and stuff, or they're drinking. And you see Hispanics. They're doing like uh, cocaine or whatever other drug is left out there. You know. Interesting. Yeah, it's a big racial thing on the inside. So, if you let's see what what the white guys white guys like meth. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the black guys like smoke. Okay, so. Um, that's really got a smell. I mean, that's a very distinctive smell. If you fire up a big old blunt or something, they're going to know you're somebody's smoking. That's got to be some sort of a, you know. Yeah, you would, I mean, <laughs> you would get in trouble for doing something like that. But there, there, it's, it's a lot of ways to hide things like that. I mean, it's more like that. You'll be surprised what inmates know how to do. You'll be surprised. <laughs> You'll be surprised because, like, they I've seen somebody I've never seen them make it, but I've actually seen somebody have a fridge in the room made out of a box. It was like a box, and the way he had it set up, I don't even know how to explain it, but it, it was crazy. The stuff they invent on the inside. So, refrigerator made out of, out of a box, it was a refrigerator made out of a cardboard box. I don't know how he did it, no idea. <laughs> and the guards don't go, like, you really, son, you can't have that. That's they don't bother that. I mean, you have you have some guards that are really strict like that, but most of the time they won't say nothing because they know that's like we live there. You know, this is where we live, so we have right. to at least try to get a little bit comfortable so we don't lose our minds on the inside. You know, because that really matters. Actually, where you live, where you sleep, and stuff that matters. Of course, it does. Mm -hmm. So, so books saved your life in a way. Yeah. That was your outlet. Yeah, that was my outlet. Books and music. Listening to music and reading books. That's what I love to do. So I, I mean, so you had to work to get batteries for the radio or whatever. I mean, I had my family sent me money when I was in prison, so I'd be able to get batteries. And I did have like a couple jobs here and there. But besides that, I would I didn't it, batteries don't really cost too much. And so they give it to you on it. So you have like a they have like this program. If you don't have no money, you get a free radio every three months and you get a free razor every three months and you get brand new batteries every every month or so you know they have like programs like that for people that don't have money and stuff okay and then you get time off did you get time off for a good behavior do they do that is that something that happens see in in north carolina they have a law it's, it's a it's called it's 85 you have to do 85 percent of your sentencing so they sentenced me to Nine years would be a hundred percent of my time. Six years is eighty five percent. I would guess. I'm guessing seventy eight, seventy five percent, or sixty five or something like that. So I had to do six years. I couldn't do nothing below six years, and I did the bare minimum, which means I like I stayed out of the way and stuff, and I didn't get in trouble. Stayed out of the way and didn't get in trouble. Towards the end, I did definitely try to, because you can't work that time down going to school and stuff. And then that's what I kind of that's what I did the last year. I did last year. I worked my all my time down to um, so I can come down to my my minimum sentencing. What do you mean you you did your side? I don't understand that. What what did you do? My, to you? I, I was working and going to school so I can work my time down. And you went to school online, or how did you go to school? No, it, we had teach we had actual teachers come from universities coming to talk to us, and we did matter of fact. We did do some classes online. Most of the classes we did were online, but we had an actual professor come in and teach us and stuff too. So what kind of, you did uh, HVAC, what what other yeah. courses were available to the inmates? I did HVAC and I did a couple months of psych. They have English 101, stuff like that. They had math, they had business classes, like small business, I took small business too. They got a lot of things, but it really depends on where you're at too. Because a lot of persons don't have school programs at all. It's just work. How many prisons were you in? I was in, i say about five. Why do they move people? They move people depending on, like, 
it, it's really it's really confusing because they have like a point system and if you have too many points you get moved to a a prison that's like a higher level and if you have little uh, lesser amount of points you get moved to a prison that has like a uh called minimum custody where you're not getting in trouble a lot and it, it, this prison is for different places and stuff they moved me just for like my first time getting in prison they moved me for getting in trouble and then they stopped move they started moving me so i could go to programs and then towards the end they moved me so i can go to school so they move you depending on what you're doing so you can be going to a program you go to this prison if you're doing like a school thing you can go to this 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 a prison you know well that makes sense that, that makes sense you reward the people who are nonviolent. Yeah, and you know, take, taking it as it goes, and, and move them into less secure areas, and then the people that are real problems, you move them farther down the line. That's interesting. So how'd you get in trouble? What did you do that got you in trouble when you first got there? I just man, just get into stuff that I couldn't get into that I wasn't supposed to be getting into. I mean, prison is like. It's more like it's not a fight or flight thing. It's more like if you if you fight or you just gotta take whatever they give you for the rest of the time that you're in prison, you know, or you can fight, 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 and it'll leave you alone. Okay. Yeah. So in the movies, interesting mm -hmm. prison movies. Uh, there's several that are pretty brutally honest about uh, forced sexual encounters in yeah. prison <laughs> yeah so what's the story on of that i mean i've i've never i've never encountered nothing like that seen nothing like that or anything it, it really depends on what state you're in because they have some states where that stuff is really big and a lot of people are doing that stuff in prison do you have some states where it's not, you don't really see that stuff a lot. In North Carolina, you don't really see too much of that. You don't really see too much of that at all in any prisons in North Carolina. But if you go to California, for say, or if you go to like Washington, that stuff is bad down there, like really, really bad. It's fascinating that sexual predation is geographical. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? what? Yeah. What's about California that makes people want to do that? I <laughs> I mean, I don't know. California's weird, man. California, they're weird down there. So I guess it's like, that's just the way you feel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay. know. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you, you, uh, if I can just back up a moment, you, you had to fight your way to respect from yeah. somebody so that they would not bother you. It's more like it's more like there's a lot of gangs in prison. When you go to prison, that's all you're going to see is gangs. And so it's more of a you go to certain prisons like the one that I went to when I first got locked up. It was like full of every, it was young, young people. It was 18 to 21. That's all that was there. So, you know, when you get a lot of teenage boys and you got a lot of young men in one area, of course, it starts like, oh, they want to dominate the area, you know. So that's why you have the gangs on the inside. And some gangs, they do like extorting and stuff. So if you can't stand on your own, you you look like a weak link. You know, they, of course, you're going to get eaten alive wherever you go. And, you know, that's just the way it is. So you got, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're a weak link, man, it, it's really, it's, it's wherever you go. It's like, if you're a weak, if you can't, if you can't learn how to take stuff, then you're going to be a weak link and the world is just going to eat you, man. The world is going to eat you. You said that though in the world, so yeah, you, the world. you mean that inside and outside of well, in your prison with walls and your outside prison without walls. You think no. it's the same way? No, but like in a different, in a different. Sure. I want to say, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just it's not the same, same, but it's like it's the same thing. You have to assert your dominance in this world, as far as like with your responsibilities and. You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, but I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, yep. No, uh, I'm trying to process what the you know in in business. Uh, you know, we have a business here. Uh, yeah, we've had to fight for uh, intellectual property through the court system. So, in a way, we have protected our our turf. I mean, yeah. I guess that's that's part of the way. But in general, um, we've really 
don't have any bad energies against anybody or we've never really yeah i mean uh, not not in that way but my my thing is more like if you have struggles in life my thing is if you have struggles in life i look at it as you going you can either you can either let those struggles take you down for the rest of your life or you can fight against them and you can do what you can to get through those struggles you know it's not more it's not like to it, it when i mean outside of the world i mean not as an aggressive way you know just like taking on life struggles without and sh showing like that you want that respect you know okay so yes um uh, i agree with you you should control the things that you can control and not worry about the things that you cannot control and you want to uh, control your environment to get better, whatever yeah. better means, uh, in your world. And yeah. go ahead. No, I said, yeah. I was just saying, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we're going to have to get in some ph philosophical stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know you're, you read, you, uh, uh, got some training or some education in philosophy. Yeah. Uh, and I, th I think everybody that you self introspection is important. You have to look at yourself with a clear eye or every once in a while and figure out who you are and what you want and what you want around you. The people you surround you with, the birds of a feather do fly together. And I, yeah. I have to say for a fact that I, uh, I, always trying to find the people that think the same way I do mm -hmm. and, and whether that's in business or in uh, uh, jujitsu, you know, I'm pretty big on that and other, other areas because you, you learn from, I learn from the people who are better at whatever is going on and I yeah. follow them around uh, and emulate their, their lifestyle or find gems in their behavior that make my life better Mm -hmm. I think you've got a couple of strokes against your brother. Uh, um, I, I would wish for you that you could change your environment somehow to see a brighter side. Yeah. You're a really smart guy. You're really thoughtful. You're really trying to do the right things all the time. I'm so amazed that I've been able to meet you mm -hmm. and that you work with us. It's a it's a good thing. I do want to say that, I mean, changing my environment would be kind of like a, would help me adapt because I can't say I fully adapt to being outside in the world because I spent six years inside. It takes some time to actually still adapt. But I wanted, I would want to say if I was in an environment where I could, I don't know how to explain it. If I had a little bit more control over what I could do out here, then I guess I would be, I would feel a little freer. I want to say, but it's still, it, I still kind of like, I'm going to still always look at it as just because I've been on the inside and I've seen what prison is like on the inside and I've seen how those people are and stuff. I come out here and I will always still have the mindset of, I know what prison on the inside looks like. And I look at everything out here and it kind of looks just the same to me as being on the inside. The only difference is they have bars. We don't. Well, I, I think to your point, I think you're absolutely right. Um, that's a community in there. Uh, it's community out here. If we go to other countries, people speak different languages, but we're all still the same. Mm -hmm. And they're all the same struggles. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, and, and really interesting that you you point out there's just bars in prison and there's not, there's not bars out here. So, wow. <laughs> My friend, that's all the time we have for today. This was episode three. Okay. Do you have one more in you? Do you, get, you have a fourth episode in you? We come back for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely have a fourth episode in me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're going to sign off for now. This is episode three of John Benitez, and we appreciate your spending time with us today. No problem, man. I appreciate it being here.